So this is Dr. Maheshwari Pawar and I would be discussing about peripheral vascular system examination. So uh, when we do uh, the physical examination regarding the peripheral vascular system, our learning objectives should be to assess the arterial pulses such as brachial artery, radial, femoral, dorsalis pedis, popliteal and posterior tibial artery pulse. Also to screen for peripheral arterial disease in abdominal aorta and renal arteries and in the extremities. Also to identify any kind of edema in extremity venous system and lymphatic system. So why we, why we do this kind of examination? So it is because it is important to do the examination for peripheral vascular system to detect the peripheral arterial disease which is one of the common disease overall the world which covers approximately 12% of the population and it often asymptomatic at first. So to know about the anatomy of peripheral vascular system, it is basically consists of circulatory vessels in of arms and legs such as arteries, veins, capillary bed which connects the arteries and veins and lymphatic system. So about the arteries it, which carry the oxygenated blood away from the heart and consist of three tissue layers. First is intima which is the inner layer surrounding the lumen of the arteries and a single continuous lining of cell with its remarkable metabolic properties. The middle layer media which is composed of smooth muscle cells which can help to dilate and constrict to accommodate blood pressure and flow. And the outer layer adventitia con which consists of connecting tissue of nerve fiber. So to assist the pulse of in arteries or in arms there are three locations which are palpable the first is brachial artery which is at above and end of the elbow and medial to the bicep tendon and muscle second is radial artery which is located lateral ventral surface of wrist and ulnar artery which is located at medial ventral surface of wrist and the arterial arches which interconnects the radial and ulnar arteries and helps to protect hand and finger circulation from arterial occlusion in the legs, there are four locations to uh, assess the arterial pulse. First is femoral artery, which is just below the inguinal ligament. Second is popliteal artery, which is an extension of femoral artery that passes medially behind distal femur and palpable behind the knee. And dorsalis pedis, which is uh, located on the dorsum of foot and posterior tibial artery, which is behind the malleolus of the ankle. So the another circulatory vessel which is veins which are thin walled highly distensible and has capacity for two third of blood flow they are uh, divided into two parts deep leg veins and superficial veins so in the deep leg veins which carries 90 percent of venous return of lower extremities consists of femoral vein which lies near the femoral artery below the inguinal ligament and the superficial veins which are subcutaneous and relatively has poor tissue support such as such as great syphilis vein which lies medially from the dorsum of foot to groin and small syphilis vein which lies side of the foot to back of the knee also there is there are some systems included in the circulatory vessels the first is lymphatic system which is a vascular network that drains lymph fluid from tissues and returns it to the venous circulation so lymph nodes are round, oval or bean shaped that vary in size according to the location. Only also only superficial lymph nodes are accessible for the physical examination. In arms we can find uh, epitrochlear lateral axillary nodes, central axillary nodes and in infraclavicular nodes. Or in legs, there are uh, super, some superficial lymph nodes such as horizontal group which lies in thigh below the inguinal ligament and ventricular, ventricle group which lies at upper part of the great syphilis vein. So now let's proceed to the capillary bed. So it is, it helps to circulate the blood from arteries to veins and the blood pressure or the hydrostatic pressure within the capillary bed, especially in arterial end, forces fluid out into the tissue bases. As blood continues with a venous end the, to the colloid oncotic pressure in plasma protein, pulls fluid back into the vascular tree. Our 
we're discussing health history. In health history, there are common and concerning symptoms of peripheral arterial disease. These include abdominal, flank or back pain, pain in the arms or legs, intermittent claudication, cold, numbness or pallor in the legs, hair loss, swelling in the calves, legs or feet, color change in fingertips or toes during cold weather, swelling with redness or tenderness. You ask the patient about abdominal flank or back pain, especially in older smokers. Is there unusual constipation or distension? Check for urinary retention, difficulty voiding or renal colic. An expanding hematoma from abdominal aortic aneurysm may cause symptoms by compressing the ureter, the bowel, and the aortic branch of the arteries. Ask about any pain or cramping in the legs during exertion that is relieved by rest within 10 minutes. This is termed intermittent claudication. Symptomatic limb ischemia with exertion is present also in atherosclerotic peripheral arterial disease. Pain with walking or prolonged standing, radiating from the spinal area into the buttocks, the thighs, lower legs or feet is present in neurogenic claudication. You ask about coldness, numbness or pallor in the feet or legs or hair loss over the anterior tibia surfaces. Hair loss over the anterior tibia surface occurs with decreased arterial perfusion. There are many symptoms of peripheral arterial diseases which are termed warning signs and they could give a clue to the perceived sites of arterial ischemia. A few include fatigue, aching, numbness or pain that limits walking or exertion in the leg, buttocks or hips. This could lead to give a clue to aortic aortoiliac artery. Erectile dysfunction could give a clue to iliac pudenda artery. Any poor healing or non-healing of wounds of the legs and feet could give a clue to common femoral or aortoiliac artery. Any pain present when at rest in the lower leg or foot and changes when standing or supine could be as a result of tibia or perineal artery compression. Abdominal pain after meals and associated food fear and weight loss could be as a result of intestinal ischemia of the celiac or superior or inferior mesenteric artery. Any first degree relative with an abdominal aortic aneurysm increases the likelihood of the patient having abdominal aortic aneurysm, especially in first degree relatives. This could increase the likelihood to 15 or 28 percent. Screening tools for peripheral arterial disease includes ankle brachial index, abdominal, renal or arterial ultrasound. Now we will look at the techniques of examination for the peripheral vascular system. For this, we will first look at the arms, then the uh, abdomen and then legs. For the arms, we have to examine both the arms from the fingertips up to the shoulder and we have to note its size, 
its symmetry and uh, if there is any swelling then we have to check for the venous pattern also and uh, the color of the skin and the color of the nail band and we have to compare both the arms for the arms we will now palpate uh, for the palpation first we will palpate the radial pearls here then we will go to the brachial pearls we will palpate uh, the brachial pearls here and then we also have to palpate the epitrochlear nodes which are located here so this for this was for the arms then we will go to the abdomen for the abdomen we will palpate the inguinal nodes the we have to palpate superficial inguinal nodes both the horizontal and vertical group which are located here for the leg examination first uh, the patient should be uh, supine and it uh, he or she should be draped so that the external genitalia is not visible and uh, the legs should be fully exposed and uh, stockings or socks should be removed for the inspection now we will we have to inspect from the groin or and buttocks up to the feet and uh, we have to note their size the symmetry of both the legs and if there uh, is uh, any swelling or not after that we have to uh, look for any look for the venous pattern and if there is any venous enlargement or not after that uh, we have to look if there is any pigmentation any rash any scar or any ulcer and we have to note the color and texture of the uh, skin the color of the nail beds and if there is any abnormal growing hair on uh, on the legs after that we have to inspect for the color of the skin uh, if there is any local redness or uh, if there is we have to note its temperature if there is any brownish area if there is any ulcers on the skin and then uh, most importantly we have to look for the saphenous uh, system for varicosities like this uh, the varicose veins look like this and uh, we have to look for the uh, uh, lower leg thigh calves for the uh, symmetry we have to look for any swelling or edema if swelling or edema is there we have to note its uh, length then uh, we have to also look if it is unilateral or bilateral after inspection we have to palpate there are three pulses we have to palpate first the femoral pulse we, which we will palpate here if the patient is obese you can use your two hands to palpate this now we will palpate the popliteal pulse which uh, which is located uh, behind the knees we can palpate it here and if the if it is not comfortable then there is one more option uh, for palpating the popliteal pulse for this the patient should be prone like this and we can palpate it here uh, in the popliteal fossa then uh, we have to look for the uh, db pulse that means dorsalis pedis pulse which is located here uh, and pt pulse or the posterior tibial pulse which is located here then we have to assess the temperature of the feet by our by the back of our fingers like this and then we will uh, finally look uh, for the swelling and edema for this we have to look for the pitting edema for this we will press firmly but gently with our thumb over the dorsum of each foot uh, then over the medial malleolus uh, behind each medial malleolus and over the shins then uh, look for pitting if pitting is present there will be a depression which is caused by our thumb normally there is none uh, and this pitting edema is also graded uh, in a four point scale so now we're going to talk about the special techniques the first one we are going to talk about the allen test in allen test we ensure the patency of an ulnar artery the patient should rest his hand in lap and palms up then we ask the patient to make a tight fist with one hand then compress both radial and ulnar artery firmly between your thumbs and fingers. Open the hand with relaxed, slightly flexed position and we see the palm is pale. Then we release the pressure over the ulnar artery. If the ulnar artery is patent, the palm flushes within about 3 to 5 seconds. 
The patency of the radial artery may be tested by releasing the radial artery while still compressing the ulnar artery. Postural color changes of chronic arterial insufficiency. In this technique, we ask the patient to raise both legs to about 60 degrees until maximum paler of the feet develops, usually within a minute. In light-skinned person, either maintenance of normal color as seen in this right foot or slight paler is normal. Then ask the patient to sit up with legs dangling down. Compare both feet noting the time required for. Return of pinkish to the skin normally about 10 seconds or less and filling of the veins of the feet and ankles normally about 15 seconds. The right foot has normal color and the veins on the foot have filled. These normal responses suggest an adequate circulation. And we can see that on the left foot, it is still pale and the veins are just starting to fill. This is the sign of arterial insufficiency. Mapping varicose veins. Mapping can show which vein are insufficient and their origin. You can map out the course and connection of varicose vein by transmitting pressure wave along the blood filled vein. With the patient standing, place your palpating finger gently on the vein and with your other hand below it, compress the vein sharply. Feel for a pressure wave transmitted to the finger of your upper hand. A palpable pressure wave indicates that the two parts of the veins are connected. Trendelen Bird Test In this test, we start with the patient in supine and elevate one leg to about 90 degrees to empty it of venous blood. Next, occlude the great venous vein in the upper thigh by manual compression using enough pressure to occlude this vein but not the deeper vessels. Then we ask the patient to stand. While you keep the vein occlude, watch for venous filling in the leg. Normally, the venous vein fills from below, taking about 35 seconds as blood flow through the capillaries bed into the venous system. After the patient stand for 20 seconds, release the compression and look for sudden additional venous filling. The sudden additional filling of superficial vein after release of compression indicates incompetent valve in the saphenous vein.